Only about 3% of the ocean is highly or fully protected. Now you can massage the numbers and you can say, well, it's maybe 8%, but that's only if you include places where fishing is allowed. That's not protection. Welcome to Mongabay Session, Sylvia. It's an honor to have you here. And as you probably already know, at Mongabe, we are huge fans of your work. I wanted to start with the basics. What sparked your passion for exploring the oceans? As a three-year-old, I got knocked over by a wave on the New Jersey beach and the ocean got my attention and it's held my attention ever since. It was not just the exhilaration, the wonder of the ocean, it's the life in the ocean. Your organization, Mission Blue, aims to inspire action to explore and protect the oceans. What are some solutions that you see are working? Here we are, 21st century humans. There's really no excuse right now for people not valuing the ocean because the knowledge is there. More conversion of wildlife to, to products of, of the wild animals that were in the ocean. When I began exploring in the 1950s as a scientist, gone. They're, they're gone. You know, the, the sharks, 90% of them were gone. If we could just get half as good at caring as we are at killing, we would make some real progress. And going on, on that thread, what do you think is the biggest danger to our oceans right now? Well, <laughs> ignorance is number one. And we've been throughout our entire history, all of it, until right about now, complacent thinking the ocean is so big so vast we can put anything into it that we wish we can take anything out of it that we want mm -hmm. and mostly the ocean is either a dump site or it's a place to find something that we can monetize or eat mm -hmm. how do you use the ocean even today's emphasis on the so-called blue economy how can we monetize what we have not yet monetized about the ocean how can we extract more fish more squid more krill how can we occupy ocean space with sea farms? Oh, we haven't figured that out yet. Let's go out there and do to the ocean what we've done to the land. Not understanding that we're already taking from the ocean our most important thing, which is our life, our existence. And talking about the urgency of protecting our oceans, do you think that we have enough momentum to, to actually protect 30% by 2030? We have about 15% of the land and about 3% of the ocean we haven't yet taken the ocean with the same degree of seriousness as we are to the land. If you can't protect the ocean, nothing else is going to matter. And Sylvia, you talk in, in your work about blue parks. What are they and what are your thoughts on how they have fared so far? Identifying those areas that are still in pretty good shape, top priority. Second, those areas that aren't in such great shape, but with care can go from wherever they are to get to a better place, realizing you can never go back to what was a thousand or even, even 10 years ago, but you can start and improve. So the idea of Hope Spots is to encourage champions, individuals, institutions, communities to nominate places that they know are still in great shape or that they're willing to commit to take and move in a better direction. Right now, there are 160 plus places. For me, it started, I guess, when I began seeing as a child places that I knew and loved just transformed right in front of me. I thought, why are we doing this? Why are we dredging this beautiful seagrass meadow in my backyard? It's just experienced massive change in such a short period of time. We need 10-year-olds to go down and experience the ocean so they can spend the rest of their life informed and inspired about why should I care about the ocean? We need to take leaders of companies, of countries. We need to take fishermen. We need to take miners down to show what is being destroyed. And what keeps you going? The success when people care. There are people who are waking up to doing that and I'm saying go for it <laughs> yes yes and finally looking back at your remarkable career what advice would you give to young scientists and explorers especially women who want to help the oceans like you have don't be afraid to be first and when somebody tells you you can't do that look them in the eye and say why not 
it isn't just science and the ocean, it's whoever you are, because we need that diversity of talents. If we wait 50 years, we're going to lose the best chance we'll ever have. So, you know, be glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here. <laughs>